All right. Good morning, everyone. It is a good Tuesday morning for another coffee chat with Economic Alliance in Homish County. I am the president and CEO, Gary Clark, and I am happy to see you all this morning. If you have your coffee, coffee cups, you know the drill. Raise them or water or whatever you like to drink. There we go. I see a few of them. Today, I'd like to give you first a quick launch of, yes, and I do have a beautiful painting of Wilbur behind me. Thank you, folks. Um, Wilbur is my friend. He has a bow tie on as well. I want to give you all some housekeeping notes really quickly. So uh, remember to add your organization name uh, to your link and chat. And then additionally, please engage us with questions and comments as you hear our presenters today. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Debbie Lowry Johnson of Alzheimer's Association. And I wanna give you just a quick insight on who Debbie is. So first and foremost, uh, she's a retired director for the Carl Gibson Center, Senior Center actually of Everett. She hosted many Alzheimer events at the Senior Center before retirement and knew that she wanted to use her distinguished Toastmaster skills to help the Alzheimer Association. Her passion for this cause led her to become the champion of fundraisers for 2020 uh, and Alzheimer's Walk. So someone who likes to only eat a certain portion of her <laughs> sandwiches, and I'll let her describe that. Debbie, please, please take it away. Thank you, Gary. Yes, it's true. I only like the square end of a piece of toast. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, for 23 years, I was in retail fine jewelry management. And then after 23 years, I started working with seniors. Um, I was the director for our retirement community, and then I went on to become the director for the Carl Gibson Senior Center of Everett. What I found is that for 23 years, I dealt with precious gems. And then when I started working with seniors, I realized I was working with precious gems that talked back. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about healthy living for your brain and your body. But you probably know that you should stay in shape, eat the right foods, but why? Absolutely why? Let me tell you a little story about Alta. Alta was a member at the Carl Gibson Senior Center of Everett. She'd been a bookkeeper for years and years, and her life was really taken away from her when she found out she had macular degeneration. And little by little, she lost the ability to see color, very little peripheral vision, if any. So she planned when she found out she had this. She planned how she would mark her clothes and what she would do. This woman was impeccable every day that she came to the senior center and she came to the senior center every single day. Her blues would match, her blacks would match. She would have matching jewelry. Her shoes were the right color. There wasn't one blue, one white, one brown, one black. She planned. She, had, she turned her clothes inside out if they were black. She could feel the tag. She took the tags off if they were blue. She had her shoes lined up with like a special piece of scotch tape on them. She learned how to fold money properly so she would know if it was a one or a five. She planned. She planned ahead because she knew what was actually going to happen to her and she would lose her sight. So the same is true for this presentation today, healthy living for your brain and body. And it's a matter of planning. And the four big plans that we have today are dealing with your physical health and exercise, your diet and nutrition. Next slide, Hazel. Your cognitive activity and your social engagement. These four are key to knowing exactly how you're going to get yourself ready. Not that everybody is going to get Alzheimer's, but if you do, there are certain things that you can do. Aging well will depend, of course, on your genes, your environment, and your lifestyle. So your genes, we don't know what you're gonna get from your parents, and they didn't know either. And your environment, you can't control that, by where you work, 
where you run, where you play, and your lifestyle as far as what you eat and what you drink. So lifestyle choices may, may, the key word here is may help keep your body and brain healthy. One thing I would like to tell you about is when we're talking about your environment and healthy choices, I want to tell you something that might stick with you, if not anything else. When my daughter's children come home from school, they're starving, absolutely starving. And so she says to them when they, they go for like the snack packs that she keeps in a special cupboard, she goes, wait a minute, if it's in a wrapper, you can't eat it. If you have to peel it, you can. So kind of ask yourself that when you're going for a snack, is it in a wrapper or do I have to peel it? And that will really help you make some healthy choices. Something to remember is that the brain is in control and it's the center of your body. Can you think of a hundred billion nerve cells, neurons creating branches and network? There are signals traveling through the brain, forming memories, thoughts, and feelings. What happens is all these little neurons and everything destroy these brain cells. I was once told that if you took cobweb and you maybe took one foot pipe and it was solid cobweb, it would actually be stronger than a solid pipe, a lead pipe. And so think of the power of, of cobwebs in your brain and then go, ooh, you know, they're very fine and very neat. The heart and the brain, they are related. And what you do to protect your heart can also help your brain to continue to operate at its best. So if you're walking and you're pumping blood, that's a good thing. The brain needs blood flow and the brain depends on oxygen and adequate blood flow to work well. I don't know how many of you out there might have sleep apnea, but what I can tell you is I do. And I know that when I don't use my machine, I feel like I'm grasping for air and my memories are just not as strong. I can't remember names or, or where we've been. And what I'd really like to do is, is to tell you, if you have sleep apnea, use your machine. <laughs> that will help you with getting enough oxygen to your brain. At the end of this presentation, I'm hoping that you will realize that physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, your cognitive activity and social engagement is very, very important. Um, now, dementia is caused by many different diseases and conditions. It's, it's not a part of normal aging. As you get old and you start forgetting things, that is not, that is not normal. The Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. The known risks for Alzheimer's include age, genetics, head injury, cardiovascular factors, and fewer years of formal education. Now that's not saying if you have a doctorate that you're not going to get Alzheimer's or that you will get Alzheimer's, but it's a matter of stimulating the brain. Uh, therapies for Alzheimer's, can they can treat the symptoms, but right now the big word is we can't cure. But what you can do currently is prevent or even slow down the progression. Next slide. So again, the four big circles of how you want to age and age healthily is your cognitive activity, physical health and exercise, diet and nutrition, and social engagement. The good news is you can have the whole pizza pie right here. You can have physical exercise and be socially engaged with friends. You can walk with more than one person. You can have that social engagement by doing so. I used to like solve the world problems by walking with a neighbor and afterwards then have a little diet and nutrition and then a um, little cognitive activity, sit down, read a book. Cardiovascular activity can reduce your risk of uh, cognitive decline. Regular and vigorous exercise leads to increased blood flow and that's a great thing. Other physical activities can also yield benefits. There's not just one recipe that's going to keep you from getting Alzheimer's or stop it, but we do know that there are items now that can 
slow it down. There is no one cure at this time. We're going to skip that particular slide. All right. So what can you do for physical health and exercise? Do something you like. You know, if you like to dance, that is considered a physical exercise. That's the good news. And start out small. Maybe when you finish this coffee chat today, walk to the end of your block. Get back, sit down, and just move about safely. Watch where you're going. Get your heart rate up. But just do it slowly and ask your friends to join you. However, before you do any of this, certainly check with your uh, doctor before you start. Next slide. I'm not sure if anybody here is in an exercise group or if you want to learn to walk a little bit more. I do want to let you know that there is an Alzheimer's walk coming up and that is October 9th. And if you would like more information, I will have Maggie give that to you at the very end of my presentation. So for your physical and exercise, health and exercise, stop smoking. Oh, that's a hard one. Probably the hardest thing that people have said is the hardest thing to do. Avoid excess alcohol and get adequate sleep. Again, if you have sleep apnea, use your machine. You will notice a big difference. Avoid a head injury. I don't think you're going to go out on the street and hit your head by any means for anything. But I was a victim of that myself with a closed head injury. You look normal, but you know that things can be just uh, like your wires are crossed. I know that eventually you can, that can, that can work out possibly. Manage your stress, treat your depression. If you think things are just not right, talk with your doctor and let him give you a referral. And do visit your doctor regularly. Um, tell them what you're feeling. Oftentimes they will be able to refer you to somebody special who can actually tell you um, where you are on a scale. Again, if you don't have a blood pressure monitor and you think, oh, I'm just feeling fine. You'd be surprised when you're feeling fine that your blood pressure can be out of control. If you're feeling that you get pretty ill after you eat sugar, have your blood sugar tested too. It's really easy to say, watch your weight when somebody offers you, you know, a piece of German chocolate cake. Just ask them for half <laughs> and watch your cholesterol. That can certainly clog your arteries and then you can certainly go for the big one. You don't want to do that. We do have somebody who is going to be speaking right now and we're going to eliminate that so we can get everything done within 30 minutes today. Um, so there was one little slice of that piece right there, diet and nutrition. Just remember, if it's in a wrapper, don't eat it. If you have to peel it, that's a great idea. Food is fuel for the brain. I just currently, I am in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and we just left from my son and daughter-in-law's home in Boone, Iowa. She's a big juicer putting everything together. And she looks great. She feels great. And that's her way of doing it. You might have your own, but like I said, if it's in a wrapper, don't eat it, go for the peel. Some dietary guidelines that can reduce your risk of heart disease. Check with your doctor, what are his guidelines? You can watch, watch for cancer, watch for your Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, stroke, and diabetes. The biggest reason I got involved with Alzheimer's was the Alzheimer's Association did come and speak to the senior center on a regular basis. And I got connected with the wonderful people that are part of the Alzheimer's staff. My father had Parkinson's related dementia. And I just remember watching his change in his memory. And that was really sad. I would love to have Hazel just change the slide right now for Martha Claire Morris. Before I go any further, does anybody have any questions whatsoever? Anybody? Okay. When we look at diet and nutrition, this is a key element for feeling good. Uh, do you eat vegetables? Do you eat fruits? You can peel those too. Nuts, beans, whole grains. Uh, my daughter-in-law shops at a, a co-op where they do everything in bulk. So that way it's, it's a little less expensive. Lean meats, fish and poultry. 
and vegetable oils such as olive oil and avocado oils, those are best. What you do want to avoid, saturated and trans fats. So the good news is about something in a wrapper or in a can or in a processed food, it'll tell you the amount of saturated and trans fats. So you'll want to like really be cognizant of what's in what you're eating and putting in your body. You want to avoid solid fat, sugar and salt. You also want to avoid deep fried foods that can clog up your arteries and unhealthy fast foods. I have to tell you that while we're on the road, we've tried not to like go into those special little hamburger joints that they're telling you about, but every once in a while we just can't resist. What we can do with diet and nutrition is certainly consult a, a reputable source, um, even about dietary supplements. There are so many claims out there that will save your memory, will clear your, will clear your forgetfulness. Check with your doctor. So many of these vitamins that are on the market now won't be on the market this time next year. Be careful with what you put on your body and work with your doctor. Occasionally, what the biggest problem is, is that some over-the-counter vitamins will contraindicate the um, medicine that your doctor has prescribed for you. Uh, one example is a friend of mine was taking excessive amounts of magnesium and started aching. And it wasn't that it was the magnesium, it was it didn't work well with her prescription. So ask your doctor, and when you go in, to see your doctor, take all your meds, lay them out and say, I'm taking this vitamin, and this vitamin. And he might say, what for? Or he might say, oh, that's a good one. So be sure you talk with your doctor about anything that you might buy, buy over the counter. Your cognitive activity, I wanted to share something with you that happened when I was at the Carl Gibson Senior Center. We brought in a group from the University of Washington. Well, it was based there. It was called the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And they offered classes at the senior center that were, you didn't have to be a college graduate, you didn't have to be a high school graduate to take these classes, but it would help you become socially engaged, but it would also um, make you think about things. Uh, one particular uh, class that was taught was called biomimicry. And you got biomimicry, and it was how nature and technology work together. When you're looking at a computer screen, like right now where it says cognitive activity, and you can see the purple overlaying on top of the gray, overlaying on top of the white, what was done is a butterfly was studied intensely so you could see how colors mask each other. We had the theory of chaos, the theory of music, and people came out of there going, oh, I never thought I would just think about this so much. It's kind of like having your own National Geographic channel, but you can sit and engage. We know that by keeping your mind active, it helps you form new connections among brain cells. So even learning a new language is, is awesome. It encourages blood flow to the brain, and that's what we need. Mentally stimulating activities can possibly maintain or even improve cognition. So you can play a computer game, you can play card games, you can do things with your grandkids. And um, I found out that they certainly know a lot more than I do about a computer. You can in engage in formal education. You can go for a degree at an older age. I'm still thinking about a master's, but I didn't get my bachelor's until I was 41, but I used it. And it really does make you think and, and use those brain cells that you thought were gone a long time ago. Regarding cognitive activity, we know that it keeps your mind active. It encourages blood flow. And mentally stimulating activities can also, when you're stimulating, help create social activities. So next slide, please, Hazel. Um, we were going to have a speaker by the name of David Bennett. We're going to pass that one right now. And things for cognitive activities, we just mentioned them, but reading books and articles that challenge and inspire you, completing puzzles, learn new skills or a hobby, or engage in ongoing learning. And again, that was the OSHA program that they had at the Senior Center. The Senior Center will be opening again in Everett, hopefully 
by the year's end. We are really unsure about that. I'm retired from there, but I still like to know what's going on. One thing I wanted to share with you regarding social engagement, you at the senior center, they had an exercise group called Enhanced Fitness. And then from the Enhanced Fitness, after they would do that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they would all go out and sit at a large table and have coffee. So they got their social interaction and they got their exercises. Sometimes they review what they read in the paper. So keep that in mind and stay active. And I think by being part of the Economic Alliance and finding out what is going on in your city, in your state and your county, that's a great thing. Stay advised and you've got a, a new chairman of the board and a CEO. And based on talking with Carrie ahead of time, I think he's going to be bringing lots of new things for you. One thing also that you really want to do when you stay socially engaged is if you have an opportunity, volunteer. And why do I say that? Uh, because volunteers live longer. And so why would I volunteer? I'm a volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association. And they said you could live longer, possibly, if you volunteer. So why not? It doesn't necessarily have to be Alzheimer's. It could be the Boys and Girls Club. It could be a volunteer with the Economic Alliance. It could be a volunteer with Boys and Girls Club, clothing, aid. Um, join a group. If you're finding that you're like isolating, engage with others. Stay involved in your community. And again, volunteer. And it, a study was done years ago that volunteers do live longer. And when I was the director at the senior center, we got everything done with volunteers, over 15,000 hours a year in volunteer time. And trust me, that saved the city a lot of money. The next thing that I would love to share with you is putting all four pieces together. So get moving. Think of that pizza. If you're gonna eat it, you better figure out a way to, to get rid of it. So start walking and eat right. So maybe get a vegetarian pizza. I don't know what they cauliflower crust. It could happen. Um, keep your mind active and stay connected with others and combine all four of these to achieve maximum benefits. We had another speaker. We're going to bypass um, Dr. Tease right at this time. And so what can you do right now when you leave this particular presentation? Again, begin today. Start small, make healthy choices, get rid of the wrappers, and make a plan. What do you want to do? Write it down and ask for support from others. And doing exercises with a friend, certainly, you know, you breathe and you talk at the same time, you do burn more calories. And what you can do now is you can have fun while you're doing it. And now, it's too good to be true. If you hear about something again on the TV, got to have this one and I feel so much better than it. Do your research, talk with your doctor, uh, talk with your pharmacist, show them what's in your pills. There are many pharmacists that will just you know, they'll give you a few minutes. One of the biggest things that we'd like to share with you today is contact the Alzheimer's Association. They have a 24 seven helpline available every single day. You can ask for help with your neighbor, with your family, there's educational seminars. We're available to do Zoom right now and help with a particular group that you're involved with. I can't think of a, a nicer, kinder group of people. They is an 800 number. Write this down. 800-272-3900. That number is available 24-7 with uh, masters in social work available for you. Now I'm going to turn it over to my wonderful trainer and mentor, and her name is Hazel Borden. Hazel, would you like to tell a little bit more about the upcoming walk, the longest day, and uh, what else they could do? Absolutely. And let me just quickly stop sharing my screen here and turn my camera back on. Hi. 
Thank you everyone who showed up today for today's awesome presentation on healthy living for the brain and body. Debbie, you are amazing. I absolutely love this topic because many times when I'm out in the community, you know, I often hear, um, oh, I wish we would have known about you guys a little longer or, you know, um, I know someone who's had this disease and, you know, what can you offer us to prevent this disease? And like Debbie said, when we first started off right now, there is no way that we can say that this is how we prevent the disease. However, studies have shown that this will greatly help you reduce your risk of the disease. So, you know, eat healthy, that cognitive stimulation, the social engagement, the physical activity, it's a puzzle, put it all together, be your best self, live your healthy life. Um, we do have a lot of programs at the Alzheimer's Association. We have support groups for individuals who are currently caregiving for this disease. You can go online to alz.org and look for us through your Washington State chapter to find all of the local support groups that we have. They are specific to that dementia um, journey that you may be going through or you may have friends that may be going through. We also have one-on-one -on -one care consultations, specifically in Snohomish County and King County. So if you call that 1-800 helpline number and you ask for a local care consultation, that will directly connect you with one of our social workers who will be able to talk to the families and really find out where are they? How can they help them better prepare for the progression of this disease? How can they plan to properly help their loved ones? on this journey. Uh, and for on, on that note, I'm going to hand it off now to Kimber as well, who you all know at the Economic Alliance. Surprise, Kimber, I called on you. <laughs> um, but she is our walk manager for our Snohomish County Walk to End Alzheimer's. And I would love for her to share a little bit more on the details for this year's up and coming walk. Yeah. Thank you, Hazel. Um, hi, my name is Kimber Behrens. I am, as Hazel said, the walk manager for the Snohomish County Walk. I'm also an Economic Alliance ambassador. So um, love the Alliance and <laughs> um, love being part of this group and seeing so many people on here. It's awesome. Um, we do, we are planning the walk to be in person this fall and it will be on October 9th this year. Um, at Boxcar Park, if of course um, everything is allowed to be in person, that that you know we are stipulating, um, following the regulations and making sure that it is safe to do so if we do so. Um, but we've been having the walk at Boxcar Park in Everett for the past um, many years, and we love that spot. So hoping to have it in person again there. That being said, um, for those not comfortable being in person quite yet at that point, um. We will have an option for you to participate, um, you know, from your own neighborhood. Um, so we're really excited about that. I'm ho hoping again to be back in person, but um, we'll see how things going are going. The walk is very important in helping fund the different programs that we offer. So Hazel had mentioned the care consultations, the support groups, um, the different programs that we have. The walk helps raise money that goes back toward all of those programs that we offer and allows us to offer them free of charge. So we really encourage you to get involved in the community. Um, you can register now. I will throw the walk website link in the chat as well as my email and phone number if you guys would like to reach out or have any questions about that. But um, the walk is our largest fundraiser um, nationwide to help raise funds to provide the programs that we offer. So. Thank you so much, Kimber. And um, at this point, we'd like to see if there's any questions or comments. Oh, Gary, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so first thing, I want to thank you, Debbie and Hazel uh, and Kimber for the presentation. Uh, very awesome. I do have a question that I have in the uh, chat box here. I hear about all the different diets, uh, keto, uh, Mediterranean, vegan, vegetarian, liquid, South Beach, uh, even Michael Teo Beach, how do you uh, how do you know what is best to follow? Okay, uh, Debbie, would you like to take this one on? Oh, sure, sure. I would love to take this on. Let's see. Okay. All righty. Are we on there, Gary? Making sure. Okay, great. 
personally, you know, I listen to those ads and I think, I have that. I have that. I think I have that. No, I, oh no, that, that, that can't be true. Um, oh, that sounds like a good deal. Well, should I, you know, if you see one of those ads and you think it's too good to be true, wait 24 hours before you call their 1 800 number, you know, and then if you buy right now within the next 10 minutes, you're going to get one free. Don't do it. Find out, then Google it. Find out exactly what is in this stuff that they want you to put in your body. It, again, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Absolutely. That's so. If you're going to feel better, if you feel better and you try this stuff, if you're on a special diet and you eat it and it's not in a wrapper, hey, I say go for it. Just proper nutrition. That's a real key. But I know there are people that go other places just to make sure that they don't get what's out there. It works for some, but not for any. There's no cure for Alzheimer's right now. We're hoping that in our lifetime, there will be one. There is research that goes on and it's very, very thorough. And if you call the hotline for the Alzheimer's Association, you can ask them, so how far are you on this? And we've recently we recently had a, a large seminar and I found something really extremely important is that eventually rather than going for an MRI to find out if your brain is shrinking, there are shortly it will come out and they can detect it in your blood. And that's a, that's a big, oh wow, because you know, the MRIs are eight to 10,000. And so when the blood work comes out and they can detect whether it's in your DNA, or in your system, that is something that the Alzheimer's Association is working on right now as we speak it's not out there you know to be used yet but it's happening soon so regarding there's so many diets out there if they include fruits and vegetables there's nothing wrong with that there's no cure for alzheimer's but just watch those drugs that want to like give you back your memory i think that would be my answer gary thank you debbie so another question for you then to piggyback on that is uh, what should we look for in signs or, or things uh, with our friends and family? Uh, what are the signs we should we should be expecting? Hazel, would you take that one right now? Absolutely. So I'm glad that someone asked because we do offer a Know the Ten Warning Signs education, pre-education seminar as well. You can find that available through our ALZ uh, dot org backslash wa or alzwa.org um, through our education link uh, we frequently offer that on a regional basis online we also can do it for your and provide it for your own organization uh, because it is something to be aware of and that's something that actually we should probably be keeping a closer tab on on um, on a professional level as well, because we're all aging and we're all aging in the workforce, not to mention the fact that we've got a lot of individuals who, you know, are getting close to retirement and maybe experiencing or seeing some of these different signs and symptoms that may be changing some of their cognition. So a big key here would be, you know, somebody who is repetitive time and time again, let me start off by just quickly just mentioning that as we age, the brain does tend to slow down a little bit. So where in the past you would be possibly really great and quick with names, you know, it may be where it takes an individual just a little bit longer to remember a name. And so maybe you do have a new coworker and maybe you do have a little harder time remembering that new coworker's name. That's completely fine. Now, if you see that a fellow coworker, you know, comes up to your cubicle or start, starts talking to you and you find that that individual just completely like forgets this person's name after they've been working with them for five to 10 years, then that would be a, a sign, you know, of concern for, for this cognition issue. Um, there, there's several different, not everyone is going to get the si same signs and symptoms of this disease. Uh, but, you know, frequently we see that individuals will start to kind of take themselves aback from having those daily interactions with social, with, with other um, employees and with other coworkers because they cannot follow conversations easily. So they may tend to not put themselves in, in that social setting. So they may start to, you know, retrieve from being a part of those, you know, office social gatherings. So again, there's 10 warning signs that we usually 
like to talk about and educate people on. And we invite you to visit our ALZ.WA.org um, to find those different education offerings so that you could view what are the 10 warning signs. All right, um, I do have some additional questions. I wanna clean up something if, if you all can help me. There was a question about uh, the Carl Gibson Senior Center uh, being permanently closed. Uh, and then there seems to be some conversation uh, to say uh, that that's not the case, but there is a closure or permanent closure uh, reference. Do you all have any thoughts on uh, where that stands? Debbie? I do. Um, the land that the Carl Gibson Senior Center is on was donated to the city of Everett and the building was built by members. And prior to my leaving, the Carl Gibson Senior Center of Everett was taken over by Parks and Recreation. Prior to that time, it had been operated under the, by the guise of the mayor. It was, Deborah Wright was my boss and she reported directly to Mayor Ray Stephenson. And Deborah's job was to take care of neighborhoods, Office of the Neighborhoods, communities, boards, and commissions. The senior center as well as the animal shelter was under one group. Parks and recreation with huge budget cuts and tax cuts due to COVID, everything has changed. So we do know, what I do know is that the Volunteers of America was looking at taking over that until the city would come back financially. And I do sit on the board uh, for the Carl Gibson Senior Center. And as of this time right now, um, there is nothing firm. There was a contract submitted to the Everett City Council. Nothing is, nothing is firm. Um, once it is, who knows really, everything in this whole world has changed, you know, due to, to COVID and to budget cuts. So if you do find the OSHER, the only program offered at even another senior center or a a senior community. As far as cognitive learning, I check it out and take it. Things will change at the senior center. It is nothing like it used to be. That's what I can tell you. Okay, thank you, Debbie. There is a uh, an additional question uh, from Wendy. Uh, this is concerning uh, potential uh, fitness opportunities, I suppose, that she's asking, what do you recommend for someone that cannot be active due to knees? Uh, her mom, who's trying to lose weight, however, uh, just can't get around due to those limitations. Uh, and it can be very depressing to just have that limitation. Can you give any advice for someone who might have limited mobility, um, who's trying to do maybe a, a hybrid diet? Um, what can she do? What, what's the best remedy for someone with limited mobility? Debbie, would Hazel, you like to Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Hazel does the Ironman, so she is our uh, guru in uh, exercise. So Hazel, tell us what you've seen. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we all tend to slow down again, you know, as we age and impact can definitely become a challenge for individuals as we age. Um, there's always different ways of implementing daily exercise into our lives. Again, always speak with your physician prior, you know, prior to starting any type of exercise regimen. I have seen a lot of success for um, aging women and, and even men who um, tend to go towards water sports as they age because it is low impact, yet it allows for cardiovascular um, exercise and activity. I frequently swim at the Snohomish Aquatic Center. And, you know, I know that they've got, it's a beautiful, beautiful aquatic center that they have there, state of the art really, uh, but they've got different aquatic uh, aerobic classes for women of all ages. They oftentimes have that river flowing where you know you can walk against the river um, to help kind of increase that resistance. 
many times. I know that uh, myself in the past, there were times where I couldn't run. And so I would put on that um, funny looking, you know, uh, belt in the water and I would run laps in the water. And believe it or not, that really it is a great workout. You can take the big strides. You can take the slow strides. You may look kind of silly, but it is a great workout. Um, again, you know, there's also gentle yoga that you can that you can maybe try as well. I know some senior centers offer a senior yoga uh, per se for for their their participants and some of their pa their patrons there. Um, Debbie, do you know of any other additional programs that maybe the Carl Senior Center had that were geared towards the aging demographic? Because I know there are several out there. It's just about getting connected through Parks and Rec. They had uh, the Senior Center had a um, stretch and tone class and probably out of the 30 people that participated in that particular class 20 of them were in wheelchairs so they work on working the upper body as far as like throwing balls throwing bean bags having fun while you're doing something they would work on basically upper body and if you could like lift your feet up um, while sitting in a chair exercise there is another one and it's uh it's a registered trademark. It's called Sit and Be Fit. And we used that at the assisted living community I was at. Everybody sat while you did your exercises. So, and that one you could probably go online for, for your mom, Sit and Be Fit. And somebody else just said YMCA is, is a good place. So if your mom can get to the YMCA with all of her knee issues, you know, if she cannot walk, I would recommend getting a hold of paratransit and see if she could be, um, taken there if she no longer drives those knee issues are terrible um and she is in a lot of pain so you want to you want to help her with that because you think that all of that pain and you do start to feel sorry for yourself and that can lead to depression it really can so um, give your mom a break the one who has that mom with the knee problems and see if there's other programs that you could find for her sit and be fit um is a great one also Thank you, Debbie. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, that's great. We're good. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Okay, so Terry Cleveland asked a question about uh, your availability to speak at uh, to seniors at um, their apartment communities, um, any common areas once they become open. Uh, she also left her email in the chat as well. But um, are you available to speak? I am. I am, and I would love to. And that's how I really got connected with Hazel. I recently, in the year 2020, I received my Distinguished Toastmaster degree. And after I got that, I thought, you know, gosh, I'm retired. I need to do something with this and do something that helps. So I love to volunteer, and I would be more than happy to do that. I'll be back in town if you want a in-person, once that's allowed by the Alzheimer's Association. I would be happy to go there, and we could set something up. Is that all right with you, Hazel? Yes. Yes, absolutely. We actually used to give those presentations to all of the different senior uh, communities, uh, the Snohomish County senior communities uh, in the area and have worked with them in multiple aspects. So we'd love to, uh, for you guys to connect and for you to take that on, Debbie. That would be amazing. Uh, one more comment, though. Uh, so, Debbie, uh, just because you are obviously a crusader and warrior for this cause, um, I want you to, if you're willing, to share with people where you're at currently and, and your willingness to speak today and where you're from and, and why this is really important to you. Absolutely. I Today I am in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Tomorrow or tonight we'll be at Mount Rushmore and my husband and I are traveling. And it's really fun. Actually, today I have on, you probably can't see my shirt, my Alzheimer's Association shirt. I'm really proud to wear this. And I had to ask the KOA campground to, yesterday when we checked in, would it be all right if I stayed a little bit longer because checkout time is 11 and we're two hours different, you know, right now? I said, I need to because I'm giving a presentation for the Alzheimer's Association. Oh, what a worthy cause. What a worthy cause. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being a volunteer. Sure, not a problem. We're not going to charge you. So that was good. That that felt good. And I had another little story. We were traveling and we were in New Mexico and we were in this little town and not everything was open. And 
we traveled for about 84 days from uh, September 2020 till mid January 2021. We wore our masks. We weren't, you know, we didn't have our shots at that time. We were really cautious. We didn't eat out in restaurants. My husband fixed all of our meals in the RV and we only went to the grocery store. But I went into this one little gift shop because I can't resist a gift shop. And I was looking at something and it was this cute little wood magnet because that's all we have room for in the RV, that and a little bit of dental floss. And it was a magnet, it was done in wood. And I said, oh, I like this little one. And the lady saw that I had an Alzheimer's shirt on and it was my, it was my champion um, chip, chip um, shirt. And last year I was, I set a goal when I turned 70 to raise $7,000 and I did. Uh, and I, I was just shocked at my friends that, that committed and I ended up raising $7,315. So I thought, well, for my 70th birthday, if I could raise 7,000, I didn't have enough rich for friends to go with 70, but 7,000 felt like the right thing to do. And people generously donated. So this lady at the gift shop said, what's your shirt say and why? And I said, well, I raised money for Alzheimer's last year. And that was my birthday present that I wanted from all my friends. And she said, oh, and it was something special. She said, you know, my mom had Alzheimer's and I appreciate what you're doing. I just want to give you this, you know, just this little magnet, but it was just because she saw my shirt and she saw my heart and people care. Um, and so here we are in a world where people think you don't care. It was just a little wooden magnet. And she said, I made that myself. And so there's passion there. And my dad suffered from uh, Parkinson's related dementia. Parts of him, I just don't ever want to, I don't want to remember because he was a funny guy. And then towards the end, he wasn't so funny. So there's some passion there and the Alzheimer's Association was so great coming to the senior center, presenting things just like this, only in person. And Hazel, I just picked her out to be my friend. So that's what I wanted to do. Does that help you? I hope. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Hazel, do you have any final thoughts or, or words uh, for the group? And then we'll throw it to Debbie for final words. No. Uh, well, we just want to invite everyone to be a part of our walk to end Alzheimer's. You know, let's make it a big one. I mean, this is we're going to be back in person if all goes well. And the fact that we've all been removed from just socially engaging with human interaction like in person, this is this is the proper opportunity to just, you know, get to be a part of it sign up, come out, volunteer, uh, just come with your group, come with your staff. You know, we encourage individuals to, to take this on on a workforce related basis as well, you know, because that's how we're going to end the stigma um, is by coming together, by talking about it, by being united in this one cause and mission. So we invite you guys to that walk to end Alzheimer's. I also want to leave everyone with a dementia roadmap. Um, I will plug it into the chat here as Debbie closes out. The dementia roadmap was put together by a dementia action collaborative group of individuals who worked with the state as well as with the Alzheimer's Association and other organizations to put together a roadmap for this particular journey in disease. Because frequently when people get this diagnosis, they're told at the physician's office, we'll see you back in three to six months. You know, we're just going to follow the progression of this disease, which by the way, is the proper way of diagnosing this disease. They shouldn't be able to just tell you the minute you walk in the door, oh, you have Alzheimer's. That's not how it works. There is a procedure. It can be lengthy. Um, so with that being said, many families walk away not knowing what comes next, what to expect, what to do, how to plan. So this dementia roadmap, there is a link. You can actually share this nationwide. It's applicable all over the country, okay? There are other states that are currently reaching out to us wanting to mimic this particular uh, piece of print so that they too can share it in their communities. So basically what it does is it breaks down every stage of the disease. It explains what that stage is, what to expect, and it gives families a checklist at every stage of the disease for all the different affairs that they need to get in order before the disease progresses onto the next stage and their loved one can no longer be a part of that planning. Okay, so the, again, this dementia roadmap, it's called the uh, Washington State Dementia Roadmap. I'm going to 
pass it over for to Debbie for any closing statements while I research and pull up that web link and type it into the chat. Thank you everyone on behalf of the Alzheimer's Association uh, for being here today. And with that, I will let Debbie close out. Thank you. Thank you, um, Hazel. I have a one really cute little story. Perhaps some, some of you are also dealing with a family member that does have Alzheimer's. There are answers that are good and there are answers that are not so kind. Recently, um, a lady who, I was the flower girl in a wedding when I was two and I'm now 70, so it's been a long time. She has two daughters. One will treat an answer her mom asks and one will treat it differently. For example, Maureen said to one daughter, so when did, when did you move all that furniture that we have, that you have over there? When did you move it all? One daughter would say, oh, mom, you've had it there for years. Don't you remember? You and dad got that. That was one daughter's answer. The next daughter, when she said, well, when did you move all that furniture? The other daughter would say, do you like it there? Do you like it there? We can move it if you like it. And it was just a kinder approach to a question that was asked. One gentleman, when I was doing training for the Alzheimer's said, his wife was always a shoe buff, loved, loved, loved shoe shopping and everything. And as her disease progressed and she didn't know where she was and she would just get agitated as could be. He would say, well, you just here, sit here just a moment. He would go to her closet, get some shoes that were in boxes and said, here, I have some shoes. Would you like to try these on? And it would just calm her and bring her just to like, I mean, her blood pressure would be going. She'd be extremely agitated. And stories like that just are really heartwarming. How do you deal with these people? You love them so much, you wanna give them a straight answer, but what do you do? There is another seminar that is put on by the Alzheimer's Association and it's financial planning for Alzheimer's. So you find out when you're 50, you have Alzheimer's. You might have a long time to live with that particular disease. Do you wanna know? Do you want your friends to know? Are you gonna keep it quiet? Will they be talking behind your back and you become paranoid? And so one of the seminars did advocate for sharing it with friends, sharing it with family. So if they say to you, remember that time we went to Mount Rushmore and we had a great time? And they look at you blank faced like, no, I don't. What do you mean you don't remember? You know, we created memories a long time ago and they're kind of fuzzy for me too. Kindness is the big key when you're responding back. They're, a person with Alzheimer's is not gonna answer the question the way you thought they might. So do it with heart and do it with kindness. Now, Gary, I'm gonna give it back to you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak to all of you today. Thank you, uh, Hazel and Debbie, you, you two are amazing. And uh, the, miss the mission that you have is paramount to all of us. Uh, I always call uh, uh, those who are able to get up there in age, like uh, Debbie said, she's 70. I mean, that's the goal for, for all of us, right? Is to, to get up there and, and, and to have that opportunity. But Debbie, I call those folks seasoned, um, yeah. you know, and I think, uh, being seasoned is the goal. And so uh, if you can uh, minimize uh, those issues by listening to the things that Debbie and Hazel have put out there, but also to have the opportunity uh, to be educated about it, um, I just want to thank you both for educating us today. And hopefully those of you still on the chat will, will reach out, link up, uh, have Debbie come to speak, even if it's in Mount Rushmore or somewhere uh, like that remote, that's totally fine. And Hazel, please uh, continue to share more information for us. Okay, well, folks, uh, we are down to the wire here. And so I just wanna make sure that you all plan to join us for our next uh, meeting, which is actually gonna be May 25th at 8.30 a.m. And it's the legislative follow-up. So all of that good information about uh, legislative items from the state level, local, however, uh, make sure that you join us so we can have a conversation about it, how it impacts our communities is very important. So with that being said, I wanna thank you all. And if you have your drinks, hold them up.
Take a sip. All right. Take a deep breath and have an amazing day. Take care, folks, from EASC Economic Alliance in the Homeless County Coffee Chats. Peace. <laughs> Thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Deb. <laughs>